Welcome back to Return of the Disc. Cue the Barry White. It is a week of romance here on Return of the Disc, bringing you two films to get things going this Valentine's. So let's get into it. Sparks fly both on and off the court in this groundbreaking feature debut by writer director Gina Prince Blythewood. Sanaa Lathan and Omar Epps make for one of the most iconic screen couples of the 2000s as the basketball obsessed next door neighbors who find love over flirtatious pickup games, fall apart under the strain of high pressure college hoops and families, and drift in and out of each other's lives as they pursue their twin aspirations of playing professionally. PG-13 from 2000, Love and Basketball. The movie starts with two little boys playing basketball. One of them's our main character, Quincy, and then the neighbor kid comes over and she's our other main character, Monica. And right away, Monica is so confident, talking up the boys, even hustling them a little bit on the court and proclaiming that she is gonna become the first female to play in the NBA. And they're like, yeah, right, whatever. The story is broken down in the four quarters. So you have childhood, high school, college, and then post-college. Now, Quincy and Monica have this sort of friendship where they can sneak into each other there's bedrooms, they can pretty much say whatever they want, they can settle things by playing basketball, and they've always done that. There's so much chemistry between Quincy and Monica that we finally get them together in college halfway through the movie. Then things spiral out. So Quincy's father is a big time athlete. He's a star. He's an NBA legend pretty much for the Clippers. And it comes out that, you know, he's been cheating on Quincy's mom for several years. That puts strain on Quincy. So Quincy's not really sure how to approach it. And he kind of, you know, he asked for Monica's help. Monica's unable to really show that kind of support. Monica has her problems as a friend freshman on a USC basketball team trying to fit in and trying to play up to a certain level and the coaches are on her. Quincy's got everything going for him as far as basketball wise but outside of basketball his father is having affairs with other women and cheating on his mom. So there's that strain. So they end up breaking up. Then things progress. Quincy goes on and plays in the NBA. Monica goes and plays overseas. So they have both have professional lives. Then something happens and they really put things on the line in a magnificent final one-on-one -on -one battle between Monica and Quincy to end the film that I thought was just magnetic. And the stakes are so high. I don't want to tell you the stakes because I think you need to see the movie. It's such a great movie, such so well done. Sanaa Lathan and Omar Epps are just electric on the screen, and I totally bought that they were both really gifted basketball players. The writing and directing by Gina Prince Blythewood is just fantastic, top notch. She drew inspiration from When Harry Met Sally, so she decided to make the black version of that. This movie surprised the heck out of me. I highly recommend it. This is the Criterion edition of Love and Basketball. It's a new 4K digital restoration supervised by director Gina Prince Blythewood, featuring additional footage cut from the original release. So you get a director's cut here, and there's two commentaries. There's a tons of interviews. There's a nice documentary on here with the interview and the cast. You have two short films here included by Prince Blythewood from her UCLA days. And, you know, fantastic release here by Criterion. Front and the back, there's the discs. And then you have the essay in the front. Love and Basketball is such a heartwarming, dramatic at times, emotional, competitive film that I think it's really one of the better films that come out of the early 2000s. Highly recommend this release by Criterion. Have you seen Love and Basketball? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Gary, and this Valentine's Day, I'm treating my sweetheart to some Reese's Pieces hearts. Peanut butter hearts. That's what they really want. I'm also here to talk about a movie, so uh, pop a top if you got them. Ooh wee! <laughs> Tammy and the T-Rex. Pretty self-explanatory. There's, you know, wonderful acting. He's still alive. What are you talking about, Michael? Michael's brain is inside of the dinosaur. I'm a dinosaur man, a prehistoric wonderful script. King of the jungle. From Wonderful from Jurassic Park and Tammy and the T-Rex. I gotta go with Tammy. She's gorgeous. I mean, let's get back on track now. Sorry, Dad. But, uh, but, uh, so a lot going on in this film. We got Bond girl Denise Richards in there. And we got Fast and Furious Paul Walker here. 
in one of his first pictures too so uh this is a very important picture for them this is a lot of fun guys this movie's a lot of fun the dinosaur effects are pretty cool i was terrified as a kid of those things man i used to be screaming and hollering out of there if my ex-girlfriend came back as a dinosaur i don't think i'd take her back <laughs> sorry darling but anywho yeah tammy and the t-rex you know actually the character in the picture uh her name's tanny and even the credits say tanny in the teenage dinosaur so uh who knows what this is actually really called but we're gonna go with what vinegar syndrome put it as as far as picture quality it looks fantastic man it feels like i just put it in my dvd player and it, it just looks like perfection so if you can check out tammy and the t-rex yeah ooh wee i give it a thumb up Happy Valentine's Day, and uh, let me know in the comments what you thought. It was pretty good. It's pretty good, Daniel. Can I get another one? From acclaimed writer Charlie Kaufman and visionary director Michelle Gondry comes Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind, a sci-fi love story starring Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet. Joel, played by Carrey, is stunned to discover that his girlfriend, Clementine, played by Winslet, has had their tumultuous relationship erased from her mind. The doctor who does the operation is played by Tom Wilkinson. You have supporting roles from Mark Ruffalo, Elijah Wood, and Kirsten Dunst. This is from 2004, Color, 108 Minutes, released by Kino Lorber. Eternal Sunshine and the Spotless Mind, I saw when it came out in theaters in 2004, and I have to say, I really enjoyed it, but I think now that I've seen it in present day, 2023, the idea of ghosting each other online now, trying to erase photos, all of that stuff. You know, when you break up with somebody, you kind of just want to be left alone or you don't even talk to them anymore because you can ghost them. That's kind of what happens to Joel in here when his girlfriend erases her memory of him after a breakup. So she essentially like ghosts him completely because he shows up at the Barnes & Noble where she works and she doesn't recognize him at all, doesn't remember him at all. This movie is almost 20 years old and, and the older it gets, the more real it could become. The cast is amazing. Jim Carrey plays this so perfectly. It's one of his best acting roles. He's so restrained, so shy. Not your typical loud performance. You're not an Ace Ventura, not The Mask, not Dumb and Dumber. He really is giving a, a world-class performance here. Kate Winslet is right there with him. She's the more spontaneous. She's out there. She's got a crazy mind. She, you know, she, she even admits, you know, she can't make up her mind and all this stuff. She's kind of off the wall. So she's the opposite of Joel in that aspect. They get along so well in the beginning and then cut to the opening titles where Joel is crying in his car and throws out their mixtape. It turns out that we've, we discovered that Clementine has had Joel erased. So Joel is like, okay, I'm gonna go through the same process because I can't get over her. So he turns in all of his memories, all of the stuff, and Tom Wilkinson, the doctor, he can map out a chart of Joel's brain based on Joel's memory of certain items, certain memories, certain photos, so that it all clicks through this machine and he's able to map it out. So then the operation happens, Mark Ruffalo, Elijah Wood and Kirsten Dunst are kind of just bumbling idiots who are in charge of this operation. So we get inside the mind of Joel for the majority of the film. And there's a point where Joel's like, I don't want to do this anymore. So it becomes sort of this preservation of memories. Will Joel be able to sort of preserve at least one memory of Clementine? Movie asks us too, the, do connections last forever? Do true, does true love connections or do true connections, do they surpass the memories once they're gone? So I think this movie is brilliant. Charlie Kaufman does an amazing script. This 4K restoration was supervised by the cinematographer Ellen Curris. Dolby Vision really brings out the colors. It's so vibrant. Film-like, the movie shot on film. So naturally you're gonna get that pop that you would get from these new 4K restorations when they're done right. Looks like all the special features are from the Blu-ray initially. So you have common Terry, a couple documentaries, conversation with Jim Carrey, conversation with Kate Winslet, Inside the Mind of Michelle Gondry, Anatomy of the Scene, so deleted scenes. So this is fully loaded. I believe it's the same audio mix that came on the Blu-ray, which is fine. Internal Sunshine and Spotless Mind is one of those films that gets better and better each watch. And the older I get, the more I get from it. And I feel it's really still very relevant to today. So guys, let me know. Have you seen Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind? Let me know below in the comments. This has been Return of the Disc. I'm Dan.
For more Return of the Disc, visit returnofthedisc.com. Check out the audio version of today's show, available on all major podcast platforms. And be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel.